So today is a pretty big day. We finally got some boots on the ground here in Alaska and some mining equipment here. And we're gonna go see if we can find some gold. Nine years after leaving, 27-year-old Parker Schnabel is back in his home state of Alaska, finally ready to fire up his new operation. It's been two years in the making. For me, the big driver of this is really trying to find the next spot to bring a big operation in. It's about showing that, okay, there's, you know, another 10 or 20 or 30 or whatever thousand ounces to do here. Parker struck a deal to mine 3,000 acres of historically gold-rich ground 20 miles north of Fairbanks that he's hoping will net 1,000 ounces in his first season. The one guy that I hired should be here already. Is that Mark? Yeah, yeah okay. hopefully that's him. Australian miner Tyler Monty will help run the operation. Hello. Hey, how's it going? You must be Tyler. Nice to meet you. I'm Mark. Nice to meet you, Mark. Alongside foreman Mark Fors. How you doing? Good. All right, well, let's get in there and, and see if the gear is ready to work. Sounds good. All Sounds right. Sounds like a plan. Let's go do it. Lots of tailings everywhere. Yeah, there was two dredges on this creek. Oh, wow. This is it. It doesn't look like much right now. Just a lot of trees. We did a bunch of pans in these drift tailings. So I was thinking to start with, we would just start hauling these back to the yard and when the plant gets there, then we'll have a stockpile of pay ready to go. Seems like it'd be easy mining to start off with. Parker believes the virgin ground on his claim could hold upwards of 2,000 ounces. But with half the season already gone, first, he's going after the easy pickings. The old timers excavated shafts through concrete like permafrost up to 100 feet deep until hitting pay dirt above bedrock. Then they drift mine horizontally and hauled out the seam of gold back to the surface, where they washed the pay dirt through primitive sluice boxes and dumped their tailings. Earlier in the season, test pens revealed oh, yeah. that the old timers' tailings are rich in gold. This is like the best pan I've ever panned. Uh, a lot of times with tailings, if you see birch trees growing out of it, they've got roots, there's gravel, there could be gold. Parker's plan? Dig out and run the shallow leftover tailings. This did get underground mined pretty hard, so it's going to be a mess down at the bottom. Do so you think like, we'll find like some shafts and stuff like and that? And drifts and so. maybe even some rooms that are all roomed out, and they'll be all full of mud. All right. We're going to get this stacked up over in our yard. Experienced operator and Alaskan local, Mark Fors, clears the trees to expose the tailings. This stuff's just sitting on top. You scrape the trees off, and it's pretty much ready to put in the plant. So pretty cheap to mine. I grew up on a homestead out in uh, McGrath, so I'm used to remote living with gold mining. It's out in the woods, kind of off the grid a little bit, which I like. That's a little bit challenging because in finding these old shafts, there's a lot of mud holes around here you can bury your dozer in. and So we're carefully trying to find the edge of these tailings. So we've got Mark on board. He's the only person that's coming here other than Tyler that I have even spoken to. But he needs help. This late in the season, skilled operators are hard to come by. So Tyler has been forced to recruit the rest of their crew via social media. 
The first of Tyler's recruits are showing up today, so hopefully they have a good attitude and lots of experience, because we need those two things. This is Phil and Jared. Hi. Jared, nice to meet you guys. Ready to move some dirt? We're yeah. Here, yeah. OK, sweet. Parker's new recruits, 36-year-old Phil Wickert and 24-year-old Jared Chase. <laughs> You guys have ran hose before? I've never operated one, no. Always wanted to, willing to learn. Gotcha. I'm just kind of excited to learn some of this stuff. I've always wanted to be running machines like this. Let's go out to the cut, and you can start digging dirt, and you can start learning how an excavator runs. Over where we're working, we're going to have some really unstable banks. Don't do anything sketchy when it comes to working around the water. Just always stay way back from the edge. Be ready to get in reverse if it all starts going, right? right. It's up to you to think and not panic if something goes wrong. So many people want to like get excited and like, oh, I got this stuck and I'm going to get it unstuck and they end up like making it 10 times worse. Yeah. So the big thing, the big thing, don't walk into the pond. If that pond will eat you alive, let's go ahead and let's take the excavator and we'll walk over and find the spot for you. So you can come in here and kind of smooth this out. And then I need a road and fill this pond in. There's your chariot. Do you know how to start it? Turn the key, right? You good? Should be. What's the number one rule? Be safe. Water. Stay Don't out of the, the water. Pond. No swimming. Phil has been mining for eight years, operating trucks and loaders. But now, he has to step up a level. So Phil has no excavator experience, which is not great. We'll see how it goes. Um, you know, day one, everybody's a little jittery. Kind of proved myself a little bit, being kind of green at uh, running an excavator. Well, literally, it looks like I'm getting into the swing of it. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm just going to remember which stick does which maneuver. Is there a horn on this thing? There we go. 